All right, so we're going to do the last part of chapter six, part four, viscous flow in ducts and pipes. The acknowledgement slide as usual. So summary of the previous slide so far. So in the previous slide, we talked about how to find friction head loss in a pipe flow. So this is called actually the major losses or major loss in the pipe. The major loss means the loss due to friction, due to viscosity. So for this purpose, we said that we would need to calculate Reynolds number first, then the ratio of the roughness to the pipe diameter. And we know that the friction factor, Darcy friction factor, is a function of these two Reynolds and epsilon over D. Then using the Holland uh, correlation or Colbrook's correlation or Moody chart, we can go ahead and find the friction factor F. Once friction factor F is known, we can go ahead and use the Darcy Weisbach equation, this one, in order to find the head loss. And then depending on the configuration of the problem, we can write the energy equation between usually two points of the system and where this head loss, friction head loss is a part of it and then we can go ahead and find you know the unknowns. So again this is the major loss so the loss due to friction HF. So today we are going to talk about another type of loss which is called minor losses. So minor losses in pipe systems are because of anything other than the tube itself. So in a pipeline, in a piping system, there are, you know, many components. It's more than just uh, having just one straight pipe. So minor losses can be due to the entrance from like a reservoir, or exit to a reservoir, sudden expansion, con uh, contraction, bends, elbows, T's, uh, fittings, valves, gradual expansion or uh, contraction, and so on. For instance, if you look at this valve, so when a valve like this is, you know, in the pipeline, you can, you know, intuitively tell that it's going to cause a pressure drop. It's going to cause a loss. And that loss is a function of, for instance, the gap, the available gap with respect to the diameter of the pipe. Or So this D would be like the diameter of the pipe because the valve is going to be connected to the pipe. <clears throat> so we do need to consider these minor losses in order to find or in order to size the pump in order to be able to find the, to find all of the losses and then design or, and then size the right pump to actually uh, generate a head equivalent to the heads that we have lost due to major losses, friction and minor losses. So there are <clears throat> multiple <clears throat> diagrams, uh, graphs, curves, tables in order to find the minor losses. So these curves are usually found by experiments and they are provided by the manufacturers of each, each of these components. Let's say you want to buy a valve from a company, they, with the valve they give you actually the characteristic curve of this valve and all of the specifications as well. So these losses, as I said, they are measured experimentally and come with the device. So they are, <clears throat> these minor losses as, are expressed as a coefficient loss coefficient K. And this loss coefficient K, how to find it, how to define it, define it, it is defined as HM, the minor loss how much head loss occurs in this device or in this component with respect to the velocity head. 
which is v square over 2g. <coughs> So as you can see, this HM, the minor loss, is equal to K V square over 2G. If we compare it with the Darcy Weisbach equation that we had before, Darcy Weisbach equation for the major loss is FL over D V square over 2G. So this V square over 2G is common between the Darcy Weisbach equation and also the definition of and also the minor loss and in fact this coefficient has been defined this in this way so that we we can go ahead and combine minor losses and major losses so if we combine them h total is equal to h major Darcy Weisbach and the sum of all minor losses so we need to see how many Valves do we have? How many bends, elbows, entrance, exits? So that gives us the sum of all minor losses. Sometimes the sum of all minor losses may be actually quite large, and uh, even maybe larger than the major loss. <clears throat> but for a very long pipeline, usually the major loss is larger. So if we add these two together and factor out the velocity head v square over 2g then we will have fl over d and then the sum of all minor loss coefficients so then this delta h total would be the head loss to be used in the energy equation so some examples for instance some examples of the K factor. Let's say what is this? Uh, this is for an, an elbow, plastic elbow, metal elbows. And these K factors are given in terms of Reynolds number. So K factor is defined as HM divided by V squared over 2G. However, as the velocity K factor changes as well. So that has to be taken into consideration. All right, so for this case, you see that the K factor uh, decreases with an increase in the Reynolds number. And this Reynolds number is in millions. And this is a log, X axis is in log form. Uh, y axis is just regular scale and this the second curve here is k factor for several types of valves k gate valve disc globe as a function of h over d h is the gap the flow gap divided by the diameter tube diameter so as h over d increases and approaches one this end right end means a valve which is fully open so a valve which is fully open therefore has a, a smaller k even it's possible that if it doesn't obstruct or affect the flow the k value can even approach zero which is the case for disc valves and the gate valves <clears throat> some other examples a butterfly valve so the K factor as a function function of valve opening angle. So what's the, the angle of this the this gate here, the butterfly valve, and the K value changes significantly with the amount of this angle. And you see that the K values for this valve can be quite large, causing a lot of pressure drop in the system. For when the for a small angles. All right, some other examples here: entrance and exit K factors. So what we see here in part A and B. So in part A, we do see re-entrant inlets. 
So in the reinterrent inlet, as you see, a pipe or tube is attached to the, for instance, inlet, let's say, to a reservoir. Then we do see a length, the length of the extended tube, L. Uh, X-axis shows the ratio of L over D, D the uh, tube diameter. And we can also consider the thickness of the wall thickness, T. T over D, therefore, is shown here. For a small L, meaning that if the tube length is small or if, if when it approaches zero, the K factor is one half. So it's like one half of the velocity head is lost during the entrance. And as L over D increases, so L over D increases for zero thickness, T over D equal to zero, the K factor A approaches one. So meaning that all of the velocity head is lost during the en entrance. So in part B, we see rounded and beveled inlets. So as you see here, so the, again, this is inlet and this is the direction of the flow from left to right. And in terms of R over D and L over D, and also the values of theta for the beveled case, we can go ahead and estimate K factor. So that's for entrance and then for exit, for exit, the exit losses are K almost equal to one for all shapes of exit. So at the exit, K equal to one, mainly because the velocity head is basically lost at the exit or it's, it cannot be used. So let's put it that, that way. Sudden expansion and contraction, figure 622 of the book. So sometimes from one tube diameter, we need to change to a larger tube diameter. So this is like uh, expansion. And sometimes we need to decrease the, the, the tube diameter. So this is called the contraction. So for these two cases, we also we can go ahead and find K by finding the ratio of D over D. So for instance, in sudden expansion, so for the upper case, sudden expansion, you see that for D over D that approaches zero, meaning that if the tube diameter, the second tube diameter is very large, so lowercase D over capital D is very small, then we lose all of the velocity head, so K is equal to one. For all different cases, a part of the velocity head is lost. Uh, so we do have values between zero and one. This is a case of gradual conical expansion. So in order to reduce the K factor, instead of like a sudden change in the tube diameter, oftentimes the two tubes are connected using a, a conical, a conical section. So with angle two theta and D1 and D2, velocity in the one of the tubes V1 and, and then V2. For instance, for air ducts, things like that. <clears throat> so in this case, we can go ahead and again find K factor here in terms of two theta and also in terms of D1 over D2. This table shows some other, uh, shows, shows K factor for some other uh, components of the piping system. For instance, for valves, elbows and T's and uh, under different conditions. So first of all, with different, based on different diameters, nominal diameter in inches, 
one half one two four uh, one two four eight twenty we can also interpolate for intermediate sizes and this table provides the k factors for screwed and also flanged components so screwed components are when uh, two threaded for instance parts are just simply screwed and flange part so the two components are connected together using a flange where the flange are put together and then bolted so based on these two different configurations the k factor could be different and here we do have for instance t's so a t is like you have a a tube and then you have an, a branch so this is called a t and the k factors can be determined for the line flow so like from the 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 the, the true flow is the line flow k factor associated with this one is lower than the k factor from the main branch to the to the you know to the to the secondary branch so the k factors would be different so one for the line flow is true flow and then the other one for the branch flow elbows with uh, 45 degrees uh, regular line radius 90 degrees 180 degrees like a turn so when you when the flow turns 180 degrees k factors is given here and also different types of valves fully open valves so fully open valves globe gate swing check angle angle valve so uh, four types of valves you see in this case fully open all right so let's do a couple of examples so the first one is 6102 a 70% efficient pump delivers water at 20 degrees C from one reservoir to another 6 meter higher delta Z 6 meter higher as shown the piping system consists of 20 meter of galvanized iron so that's to find the roughness 0.05 meter pipe that would be the 5 centimeter diameter a re-entrant entrance so we just had a curve for the entrant the entrant entrance two screwed 90 degrees long radius elbows we just looked at the table so we can go ahead and find them from the tables a, a screwed open gate valve just in the previous table we just talked about and a sharp exit k value equal to one what is the input power required in horsepower or in kilowatts with and without a six degree well designed conical expansion added to the exit so if we do have this conical shape or we don't have it so just the k value for this one would be different so and the flow rate is given as 0 0.01 cubic meter per second okay so this is again this is like a problem that we have seen before but usually before we never actually considered the minor losses so this time we want to consider the minor losses as well so for this purpose we do need to find the k factors of different components the reentrant k equal to one for these conditions if we go back to the table for zero thickness and for a large l k approaches one k of elbow from the table we just talked about we do have two of them gate valve one of them from the tables sharp exit k is equal to one from one of the figures we talked about before 
Okay, so we also need to find the velocity. The flow rate is given. The tube diameter is given, so we can go ahead and find the velocity and the Reynolds number. Turbulent flow, 254,000. So, how about the roughness? So here, this is Reynolds number. We also need the roughness. The roughness for galvanized iron, it is, it is actually given in a table that I will show it in the next slide. So for galvanized iron, uh, epsilon is given. We find the ratio of epsilon over D, 0, 0, 003. And then once we have epsilon over D and Reynolds number, we can go ahead and use the Moody chart or Colebrook or Holland's equation in order to find the friction factor F. Okay, so now that we have F, we need to use the energy equation. So the energy equation, we need to be careful here. Energy equation always depends on the point one and two. So here we want to write it between point one, the surface of reservoir one, and the surface of reservoir two. However, in the middle, in, in the middle between point one and two, there is a pump as well. So we need to consider the head, the head of the pump, the energy which is added to the liquid, to the water. So from point one to two, if we write the energy equation, P over gamma V square over two G plus Z from point one to point two plus head losses, in this case, major loss and minor loss, and we need to go ahead and add the head of the pump because that's an input energy which is added after point one. So pressure in this case, that's the pressure on the surface of the this reservoir cancels out. Velocities on the surface of the these reservoirs are zero, cancel out. We only are left with HP and Z1 and Z2 and the minor and major losses. Okay, if we rearrange HP, H of pump, is equal to delta Z, Z2 minus Z1, plus major and minor losses. The, mi the major loss is FL over D, V squared over 2G, Darcy Weisbach. And then the minor losses, sum of k values, k factors that we just found, multiply again by v squared over 2g. So please note that this v, v squared is not zero. This is the velocity inside the piping system. This is not velocity on the surface of the reservoir, which we just assume to be zero. So this is different. So we plug in the numbers. Uh, everything is known here, so uh, everything is known, so we go ahead and find HP of the pump, 24 meters, and the power is equal to rho g or gamma h, or gamma, sorry, q times h of the pump, because the efficiency of the pump is 70%, so 30% is lost, so we so the power of the input power to the pump, electrical power must be larger, so we divide it by 70%, and we find the pump power in kilowatts. If we replace, so part B, so this was for a sharp exit, if we replace the sharp exit with a conical diffuser, so the k value will decrease if you go to that figure for the conical diffuser the k value decreases and uh, if we replace k value 1 with 0 0.03 and redo the calculations you see that we will save four percent in in the power in the input power so that that could be significant just by by changing you know and 
a small and cheap component, we can save 4% in the electricity. So this is the table that I was talking about, the table that lists the, uh, the roughness of different commercial uh, ducts or tubes, steel, iron, brass, plastic, glass, and so on. Different conditions, whether it's brand new or whether it is used. <clears throat> Well, it is basically, it doesn't give the values for use, it gives the values for new. So, but it may change during operation. So, the uncertainty and the values in two different systems, English system and also SI system. All right, so another problem, 6108, the water pump in the figure maintains a pressure of 45,000 pascals at point one. So after this point one is right already after the pump with a raised pressure of 45,000. There is a filter, there is a valve, a half open disc valve, two regular screwed elbows from the table. We can find the K values. There are 25 meter of 0.1 meter diameter commercial steel pipe, 25 meter of pipe, if it you know consider it as a straight pipe. If the flow rate is given, what is the loss coefficient of the filter? So flow rate has been given, but the loss coefficient of the filter is the unknown that we want to find. And then part B, if the disc valve is wide open, so in part A, it was half open, but now if it's wide open, and K of filter is seven, what is the resulting flow rate? So, all right, so we need to go ahead and write the energy equation between point one here of this tube and the free surface and then consider the major and minor losses and also delta Z. This is a good problem. So could be kind of, could be given in the exam, something like this. If we write the energy equation between point one, right at the exit of the pump is point one, so P1 is not zero. And, <clears throat> V1 is the velocity there, it is not zero. And then Z1, P2 is on the surface. So let's see what we say for water. The energy equation is written between point one to the surface of the tank. On the surface of the tank, the pressure is atmospheric pressure. So this P1, therefore here, this must be gauge pressure, and it is gauge pressure with respect to the atmosphere. And velocity uh, on the surface, on the free surface of the tank is zero. So this velocity one is not zero, but V2 is zero, so you need to be careful. Z2, and then the minor and major losses. That's the velocity head, which is in terms of V1, the velocity in the pipe, not V2, the velocity of the free surface. It's based on V1, the velocity of the fluid of water in the pipe. Then the first part is the Darcy Weisbach friction, and then the K values for valve filter, which is unknown, two elbows, one exit, K equal to one. So if we substitute these values, uh, first of all, Q is known in part A. So we can go ahead and find V1, 1.27 meter per second. Velocity is Q over A. And then we look up the minor losses. So if we go ahead and plug in this number, the pressure 45,000, rho G, 
specific weight of water, velocity squared over 2g, and z1 equal to 0, like the reference, but z2, like is the elevator, is not 0. Then on the right side of the energy equation, pressure term 0, velocity term 0, z2 2.5, and then we do have all of these terms, the velocity square over 2g, f, it is unknown, we haven't found it yet, so let's see if, if it can be found directly or we do need to do iteration, and then k values of different valves, half open valve, filter is unknown, two elbows, and exit equal to 1. So all of these things can be found from the previous tables and uh, uh, curves. So in this equation, we do have two unknowns, k and f. We can solve for k filter if we evaluate f. So let's see if we can directly evaluate f. Probably yes. <laughs> If we compute Rayner's number, rho VD over mu, Rayner's number is known. And for commercial steel, epsilon from the previous table, epsilon over D is known. So we do have uh, <coughs> Rayner's number and epsilon over D. We can use Moody chart or Colbrook or Holland's equation and find F. I suggest to use Holland equation to get the, the most accurate number, 0 0.0195, so we plug in F here, everything else is known, so we can find K of the filter, 16.6. .6. So filter, usually, filters usually have a high K value because they do, they cause a lot of pressure drop in the system. <clears throat> So part B of the problem was that if we now fully open the valve and what was it I forgot. So if we fully open the valve and with a given K value, K value for the filter, what would be the flow rate? So the same energy equation, but this time for a fully open valve k, k value equal to 0 for this particular valve k of filter in this case is 7 but the flow rate is not known therefore the velocity is not known so we just put it as velocity since velocity is not known Reynolds number is not known so we cannot uh, directly find f the friction coefficient so Therefore, as a result, we do need to do this problem, find the unknowns f and v by iteration. How to do that? We just guess, for instance, we assume that f is equal to, let's say, 0 0.02. So we guess the value of f and then put it here in the equation and find v. Once we find v, we can calculate Reynolds number and with epsilon over d, we can find a new f f nu and then put it in the equation again and find v nu so this v nu and then do this uh, like two times three times and when you see that the velocity does not change anymore for instance from 1.78 next time becomes just 1.77 then you can stop and based on this iteration the details of the iteration is not shown here but you can just do it yourself. It's, it is not time consuming, it is straightforward, but you do need to know how to handle it. And then once velocity is known, multiply by the area to find the Q, the flow rate. All right, so this brings us to the end of this chapter. We covered most essential parts. This, well, this is a very useful chapter and very practical because it's uh, to design like to size pipes. It's, this is a fundamental of piping. 
uh, we did some problems with the way uh, work with Moody chart. What we didn't do, we didn't do uh, flows, flow in uh, networks. Let's say, for instance, here we only had like one pipe, right? So, but oftentimes the pipes may be uh, in parallel, you know, in parallel multiple networks or very complex networks. So there are actually, uh, in, in the textbook, there are ways of, you know, doing those kind of problems as well, you know, solving equations for the networks. But nowadays, based on my experience, usually it's not done by hand calculation flowing networks instead it is important to know the essentials the fundamentals flow in a single pipe and then if you do need to do the piping for a network of many pipes that's usually done that's usually done by software so various you know one dimensional software that have been designed to very quickly you know solve the problem in a network of pipes if you want to do it manually it is, it is not, you know, the, the, the state of the art because it's going to take a lot of time. So I just didn't cover the flow in networks. Instead, we focused on understanding the uh, basic equations and the approach in uh, uh, just one pipe with, you know, multiple couplings and so on and so forth. All right, so this brings us to the end of the chapter. Thank you for watching.